This is a video journal entry of the life and the death of Sarah Kosov Kennedy. My goal with the video is to take an initiative from those who would use her and her story as a political tool within their own martial arts circles to better themselves and to defame her surviving husband, Sean Kennedy, as well as Sarah's name. There are few people who know the story, and there are even fewer people who live the story. I am one of those. I first met Sarah when I was about 19 years old. Sarah would have been about 16 years old at the time. I, uh, I was in a band, and one of the guys that played guitar dated Sarah. They eventually fell in love, they got married, and his name was Steve, and, and Sarah was married to him for a number of years. They had children together. This was a, a fairly tough time for Sarah. Um, I don't want to get into pointing fingers at, at the first husband. He and I did have a friendship at one time. But let it suffice to be said that the struggles that Sarah went through are on par with the greatest struggles that a woman can go through in a marriage with somebody that has dependencies and addictions. Uh, when, it, when it finally came down and when it finally ended and the marriage was over, Steve uh, did take the three children and moved back to Switzerland where he has dual citizenship. So Sarah's three children were basically taken from her. Her passport was taken. Any identification was taken. The front door of the house had fallen off. She had no vehicle. She had no money. She had no way to pursue the children and very little legal recourse that she could do. She was basically cut off from them uh, by someone with superior financial and political pull. And that was a very tough road that she had to walk through. <clears throat> she ended up studying martial arts with a good friend of mine named Sean Kennedy. And the martial arts gave her a sense of empowerment. That it taught her to quit being the victim or to quit seeing herself as the victim. And she started to walk more uprightly. Her head picked up. Her shoulders picked up. And I believe it really changed her as a person, as martial arts will often do for someone. Eventually, Sarah and Sean... Uh, fell in love. The first husband has not been back. Uh, she hasn't really seen her children. Uh, two of them don't even speak English, and she doesn't speak very good French, so there's a discommunication, a uh, disconnection there in the communication. Sean and Sarah did get together. That's my martial arts teacher. And um, they had a young child as well named Mira. And that's kind of where our story picks up. It's just a, a year or two ago, Mira being th about three or four years old, and Sarah being diagnosed with breast cancer at this time. So the reason I tell you all this story is because it's not hearsay. I knew Sarah for 15 years, and I've been, been involved in her life for that duration. Um, and so I have a... a in, in addition, I was there the night that she left this earth, I was one of three people that was holding on to her as she took her last breath and she died. That puts me in a unique position to tell this story in a very objective and accurate standpoint. So I, I hope that it serves some purpose in that. Um, Sean was a very hard worker. And the reason that I'm going to keep bringing him up is because he is probably the main focus of the attack on his character that's taking place at this time. Sean worked every day. He drove no matter how far he had to drive. He was a carpenter and a builder. He's a very good builder. He does a dangerous job. He's out in the weather every day, no matter what the weather's doing, doing things that a lot of people couldn't do, just physically. Um, and he supported Sarah, and he supported his young daughter like a good man should, in my opinion. Sarah began to achieve a lot of skill in her martial arts training. And, uh, you know, when you're the wife of a martial arts teacher, people are always going to wonder if you get some sort of special privileges, you know. So as she moved on up into the rank, people would ask questions, and, and they would say, well, you know, why is she already a second-degree black belt? Why is she a third-degree black belt? It's, it's only been this many years. And uh, my background in martial arts comes from uh, Tungsudo. 
And Tang Soo Do is a pretty straightforward art where you kick and punch. And uh, as you may know, Tai Jitsu or Budo Tai Jitsu has a lot more of body movement and grappling and lock locking, grappling and locking. And uh, I enjoy my Tai Jitsu training as I get older because it's not as harsh on the body and it develops a really sensitive close quarters feel and complements harder, longer range styles well. And it's just fun. But I too often wondered, and I was like, you know, Sarah's got this rank or whatever, um, what is her real skill level, you know, because I, I had a certain amount of confidence that, that I could just basically punch her in the face and kick her in the stomach really quickly. And I have to say, as a martial arts uh, professional and practitioner and a very humble student of, of these ways of the warrior, warrior traditions, that Sarah's skill was unique and it was authentic and it was genuine. Um, she was one of those people that if you were her uke, you knew that you could attack her and grab onto her and hold onto her with, with resistance and with power and use your sensitivity to, to try to counter what she was doing and she could still put out a, a large amount of pain on your body with the control that resulted in you not being permanently injured. Sarah's skill as a martial artist before she got sick was very good and after she got sick it reached a level of mastery that that Sean and I uh, haven't even really seen in others, let alone ourselves. So immediately, Sarah was faced with a lot of questions. The doctors recommended that she immediately uh, have aggressive surgery and various uh, modern mainstream cancer therapies applied to her person. Um, Sean, being the husband, just like any husband, would want what's best for his wife. So I think that he was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, the, the rock being Sarah and her saying, no, I'm going to do more research. Chemotherapy will kill me. I'm very susceptible to chemicals as it is. I know in my spirit that that's not for me to do. And the hard place being traditional uh, radiation, aggressive breast removal, and uh, chemotherapy, and so on. So obviously, being the, the husband that he is, and the person that he is, he said, well, I, I can't force you to do anything. I'm going to support what you choose to do on this matter. Um, so, so it's that. I mean, it's not like you're going to live in a marriage and, and be totally at war with the woman that you love who, is, who has breast cancer over how she's handling it, you know. So, um, Sarah began to do a lot of research, mostly online, a lot of talking to people, and she was astounded with how little information there was out there, uh, how many how few clearing houses there were for people researching alternative methods of dealing with breast cancer. I remember she spent hours and hours and hours on the computer, um, and she, she uncovered some interesting things, not the least of which would be that women who have had children, traumatic incidents with children being taken from them, especially during breastfeeding cycles, which was the case with Sarah uh, with her first three children, that there is a correlation between that and breast cancer, so that's something to just be aware of. Um, I don't think I mentioned how Sarah knew to go check at the doctor. She was breastfeeding her daughter Mira at the time, and the milk stopped flowing. And so when the milk stopped flowing, uh, she went to the doctor, and that's, that's how she found out about it. Um, Sean's support remained rock steady and evolved. Uh, because in the beginning, you couldn't tell, you know, you couldn't tell that Sarah had breast cancer. It was just a scary thing. And also, be aware, uh, those of you who have been through it understand, martial artists understand, that our mind is very powerful, and the way we think secretes certain chemicals and hormones in our bodies. And when we think fearfully or we think aggressively, we're releasing certain things in our body to deal with that stress. And, and when you think peacefully and when you think thoughts that are more gentle, your body correspondingly sends a message to all the cells of your body that is, that is basically conveying that mood. So somebody with cancer, the last thing that you want to focus on is fear and anger. Um, and so 
obviously anybody who has had cancer uh, has dealt with this in incredible uh, balance between being realistic and doing what you have to do, uh, trying to think positive, healing, happy thoughts, and uh, at the same time being very afraid of the unknown.